Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute, but I'm back with a tutorial on how to make Lolly Poppy's hammer from League of Legends. This is one of my favorite cosplays I've made. It's super easy to wear, and the giant lollipop is an awesome conversation starter at cons. I strive for accuracy and try to make all my props proportionate to the characters I cosplay, so my lollipop is just shy of seven feet tall. Let's get started with the supplies you're gonna need for this beast. For the base shape for the candy hammer, I used one inch wide foam insulation board. I chose to use paper mache to cover the foam. A five foot long PVC pipe for the handle, and you'll need a PVC connector to secure your hammer to the handle. I used an X-Acto knife, some blades, and some sculpting tools as well. I used Loctite foam board adhesive to hold my hammer end together. You'll also want a couple different grains of sandpaper. You could get by with just one fine grain sandpaper if you're patient. To paint the hammer, I used white acrylic primer and various acrylic paints. Having small plastic containers to keep your paint in are really convenient as well, but totally optional. To seal this, I used Crystal Clear, but you can always choose to upgrade to something stronger, like an outdoor waterproof Mod Podge. Just make sure you have a glossy finish so that it actually looks reminiscent of candy. Most of these supplies can all be found at Lowe's, um, aside from like the acrylic paint. First things first, I cut down my giant foam boards into 24 by 24 inch squares. The end of the hammer is 3 inches thick, so I did this 3 times. This is where a big, badass X-Acto knife comes in handy. Next, I marked the center 12 inches of each side of one board. Then, using those marks as guidelines, draw two connecting lines across the board to find the center. After that, I measured 12 inches from the center as little guidelines for my circle and marked them, drawing in my circle afterwards. Cut the corners off of each quadrant, leaving you with your base circle shape. Taking that circle as a guide, then trace it onto the other two boards and cut out the corners, just like before. Don't worry if the edges are jagged or crooked, everything will get evened out with sanding later. So next, we're going to cut out a slot for our PVC connector to fit inside of the candy hammer. Trace the PVC connector onto one of the boards and cut it out. This will be your middle board. Make sure that the connector sits snugly and if you cut the hole too big, you can pad it with scraps of foam board attached with masking tape. This needs to be tight so that your candy doesn't wobble on the stick. Next, lay the middle board on top of one of your outer boards. Trace the shape you cut out onto the board below it. Carve out the shape you made so that your PVC connector is nested into the outer board. I use some clay sculpting tools to kind of help dig into the board, but you could even get this accomplished with just an X-Acto knife. I want to stress that you do not have to use the same shape connector I used here. If you feel that you want more support inside of your hammer end, you can get a straight connector and a smaller piece of PVC pipe and just nest that inside of the hammer. It's totally up to you. Now, just repeat this process with the other outer board. Test your indents and make sure the boards are flat and the PVC connector is snug. It's much easier to just dig more foam board out rather than trying to pad it if you do make it too loose. All right, we're ready to glue now. So take your pieces outside and using the foam board adhesive, take one outer piece and glue the PVC connector into its little nest, pressing the connector into place. Now apply glue to the rest of the board. Now you need to get your middle board covered in glue as well. Place it on top of the first board and get the other side covered with glue also. Apply glue to the other outer board and remember to get more glue in the spot you dug out to hold your little PVC connector. Put the boards together and press down to get them to stick together. I recommend leaving the board sit with weight evenly distributed on them for a few hours. As you can see, this is not nice and round and smooth yet. So we're gonna fix that by rounding out the candy shape. Draw a line about an inch in from the edge of the circle on both sides. Use your X-Acto knife to bevel the edge all the way around on both sides. Now we're gonna start sanding and shaping the outside so that it's all smooth and round like a piece of candy. 
This takes some patience and attention to detail. Be careful not to rip up the edges of the foam board with your sandpaper by being too rough or going too quick. It's preferred to use a heavy green sandpaper first, followed by a fine green sandpaper to really smooth out the edges. Okay, this is where the artistry and steady hand really comes in. Mark the lollipop swirl onto both sides of the circle. Remember that there's a back and a front, so the design will be facing opposite directions on either side. This is where using the in-game model will be helpful. I'll leave a link in the description to the official resource. Once you have those lines marked, you can start using an X-Acto knife or blade to etch the design into the foam board. Be careful with this step. I use a clay shaping tool to help with it, but that's entirely optional and whatever you feel comfortable with will work. Remember to connect your lines to the mirror design along the outside edges. So now it's time for paper mache. Um, I use a mixture of Elmer's glue, Mod Podge, flour, and hot water in my mache mixture. Pro tip, adding a little salt will help prevent mold. Putting straight white glue down on the foam board before the paper will help prevent air bubbles in your paper mache. And it'll get the paper to stick to the foam a whole lot better. You'll also need to press the paper into the edge details so you can still see the dimension. If you don't do this, it'll leave air pockets which weaken the prop and that'll make it easily damaged. Paper mache is super cheap. I recommend two coats for a little added durability, but don't go swinging this around because it is still just newspaper on foam board and it is not indestructible whatsoever. Make sure you allow your paper mache to fully dry before continuing to the next step. You can set it in front of a fan to help speed up the drying process. Once that's dry, apply a white primer paint. I use a really shitty, cheap acrylic paint from the brand Folk Art. I really dislike this paint. It's chalky like a tempera paint, so I mostly just use it for priming. I mean, it's just fine for that. You can add a second coat if you want. The goal is to entirely mask the newspaper print and give your good acrylics a, a nice, even base to stick to. Next, you'll be marking out your lines for each of your colors. I used a printed out 3D model reference to transfer the design. Let me tell you now, Sharpie was a bad choice. It takes so much more paint to cover up Sharpie. I recommend pencil instead. Learn from my mistakes, please. Now you can mix a blue, yellow, and pink paint to your liking and go to town. After my base colors were on, I went back in with a watercolor palette to give the stripes some shading to help give it depth and make the colors pop. Once it's dry, take it outside and seal it with a clear coat. Be certain that your sealant is dry before touching it. Don't forget to paint your PVC pipe. I sponged on two coats of that shitty white primer paint with a sponge brush to give it texture then once it was dry, painted over it with a neutral kind of tan color with the brush. And voila! You have a big, badass, giant lollipop to bring your lollipoppy cosplay to life. I really hope this video helped if you're trying to figure out how to make this prop. If you're working on a lollipoppy cosplay or have any questions, comment down below. If this video helped you, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more tutorials and cosplay content in the future.